Hello everyone, this might be a bit of a long one so you might as well get a cup of tea, sit back and we'll go through this. So I've been using a CTC type printer, the older version, uh, that's now the, I can't remember what it's called, it's a, uh, off the back of the Flashboard MakerBot series or you know a clone of it and for a price, it served me well and, and I've got three of them, two of them are mine and one I've got on loan from my friend Paul Elliott which uh, I will put a picture of uh, the creation that he's done because it is, it is good. But um, for a long while I've been using Octopi to control the, the printers and also Cura. Now if I was to say that uh, the age of the Cura update I think was Oh well, Cura and Octopi goes back to at least probably 2015 slash 16. I was well overdue, and I'd been put off for a while because the last time I tried to do an update, nothing worked. It really hacked me off, and that was it. But with this whole virus thing in place, I've decided, sod it. I'll bite the bullet. We'll crack on. So this is how I got uh, the Octo um, Octopi with Cura, all up and running, with minimal problems. So I've gone through all the little problems that I ran into, and hopefully, if you follow these instructions, you'll get on uh, to it quite quite quickly. Uh, the Raspberry Pi that I'm using is a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. So the first steps, what we'll do is you, you go to uh, the octoprint.org website. Uh, I'll put all this description into the sorry, all the steps into the description itself uh, and then at least you've got that to hand if you want to have a, a quick pull and just pull out all the text. Now I won't go into too much detail but literally you just go to the website and you click download and that's it. Uh, the, the download for Octopi is very much better because it's a, a Raspberry Pi. It's a it's essentially a Linux image, and it's a bit of a different thing to uh, understand when you're using Windows. However, the way that this is all laid out, uh, that's a whole setup process. So, for those who are quite happy, if you follow these instructions, I can assure you, you will not go wrong. So you unzip, uh, use the uh, etcher, which uh, I believe is a Windows element. I don't, I use Linux, so I did it a different way. Uh, if you want me to do show you that, I can do, but I won't bore you. If you're on Linux already, you'll know how to do this. Um, you change your configuration for your Wi-Fi. Uh, that's important. You mess that up and things won't work. And, and essentially just follow it all the way through. And it's, it's not a problem. So just follow all these instructions and everything's fine. Again, I won't go into too much detail, but as an example, once you're actually uh, got down to here, uh, if you find your uh, IP address for your uh, Octoprint, Octopi, whichever you want to call it, uh, you end up uh, getting something a bit like this. This is, sorry, wrong one. This is my older Octoprint, and I'll show you the difference between the two, and that's the newer one, but so you can be able to find your IP address for the Octo uh, Print Octo Pi. It will be on your main router's um, list of connected devices if you've successfully got it. If you get stuck on that, um, then so be it. But we can we can get you around that. Uh, but there's a lot of support in this part here. So once you're all up and running and you're, you're in, so if I go to the, the new one and show you what we've got, uh, as you can see I've, I've not long since finished a print. So what you want to do is you'll first want to go to here in terms of settings and if I remember right, it guides you through this but I'm going to just show you as if you've just thrown this in and just skipped by all the settings and, and a bit of a pickle. Uh, we'll get through it. So what we want to do is you want to go to uh, printer profiles first and you'll have a, uh, a default one or you can create a brand new one. You can, for ease of purpose, you know, create a brand new one. But what I want to do is go through these parts here. So on your, um, on your general, you have CTC. 
identify default and model 3D printer. You don't have to be any more accurate than that and that'll be fine. Uh, next what I want to do is go to print bed and build volume. Uh, the uh, form factor for the CTC is a rectangular. The origin is center and you've got a heated bed. The next parts here, these are basically the dimensions for your uh, kind of print volume really, is, you know, how far can you go with it. Uh, the CTC is not all that big, but you can be creative and build stuff off it, it's no problem at all. So you want width 200 millimeters, you want depth 145 millimeters, and your Z, the height of it, is 150 millimeters. And that's it, so all you want to do is click on confirm. And you're done with that. That's it. That's it. That's all you need to do. So the next thing I like to do up here is this will uh, catch us out. Is if you click on serial connection, uh, you want to make sure that it's in a serial port dev slash tty acmo. You might have auto that's served me well many times with this. And then have your board rate as uh, 115200, and that's it. Uh, you you've got other bits down here where you, you know you don't need to have logging on, and leave these alone for now unless you start getting problems, uh, which hopefully uh, after we do this you, you won't need. So so uh, so we did the printer profiles, didn't we? Um, let me just double check. Oh yeah, sorry, we didn't actually. So I clicked on confirm. Um, so axis, uh, so you want uh, 6,000 at the X, 6,000 on the Y, 200 on the Z or Z if you're American, and E if you're extruder, 300. So that's what you need. Then hot end and extruder. Now your nozzle size, um, pretty much by default you'll get a 0.4 nozzle but you can change that down to you know you can change it down to whatever you want to do but go for that now for me and it's just something I did from literally day one when I first got the printer is I used a, uh, a single extruder I took the other one off took all the cables out makes a, a lot lighter carriage don't ask me why I just did it and it's it served me well so so yeah so that's your your profile set up so click on confirm apologies went to ahead of ourselves now the next part what we want to do is we want to go to plugin manager now I got caught out by this in the first instance and it's bugged the hell out of me uh, when you first go to get a plugin uh, you'll have uh, an error up here and it was something along the line saying uh, uh, you need to have uh, pip installation uh, or something like that, whatever the rubbish is, I can't remember the text now. But anyway, to get around it, all you need to do is click on this spanner here and then scroll right down to the bottom and force the use of the dash dash user flag with pip install. Tick that box, then click on save. Then what you will do is obviously you'll not have anything in here, but then you want to click get more and it's so pre-populated, you can see that I've been practicing doing this, is uh, type in capital GPX, it'll come up with a GPX, and click on install. Once that's installed, what we want to then do is uh, just make sure that you've got the enabled here, so you can enable and disable it here if you wish. Uh, you'll need to restart it, but I'll just pop that on now. now I'll mess around with that in a minute. So what will happen down here is you'll have a uh, GPX. Now for those who don't know, uh, GPX is essentially the ability to convert G code into the, I've got to get this right, the three, sorry, the X3G format that the CTCs prefer. Uh, and if you don't do this, you end up with a problem when you go to connect to it, the, the printer just throws a stupid error. And that in itself, again, this is why it put me off for so long, is it drove me nuts and I just dismissed it. And I thought, right, I'm going to fix it. And this was the way. So as long as you do that, that's fine. So you come into GPX. What we want to do is enable GPX. Essentially, that's what you want to do, first of all. 
and I'll leave these three unticked. Now, what you need to have on here, you can have a replicator dual extruder or single extruder. I've got dual, it, it really doesn't matter. Whilst I've got the dual extruder, I'm not using both. Uh, and then again, I never do. I've not, not needed the purpose to do so. And uh, then what I want to do is I just want to make sure that I've got uh, these settings in place and pretty much these are default that I had come through. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll put them all in the description so you can follow through. But um, these numbers, they are quite long. Uh, if I just go along, they don't just end just like that. There's, there's more to them. But I'll leave that in the description so you can then copy them out. And what I've done is I've uh, the, in the description will be maximum feed rate, home feed rate, steps per millimetre and home. And again, once you've done that, that's it. You're fine. So now the only one last thing is just to double check this is rep wrap or make a bot. Rep wrap will be for me. Uh, and again, I've used this on three of the uh, CTC printers uh, with no faults at all. So I'm quite confident that this has worked. So, so that's it. So all you do is then click on save. So I'll just, in fact, I'll just close that. But uh, it did tell me that I've got to. Have I still got a reboot? Plugin manager. Well, no, solid. We'll leave it. Right. So that's it for now. So if you're in this state, uh, theoretically, what you can do is once you you're, you're connected, and I'll just show you disconnect. So that means everything will be populated here. So you should be fine. Literally, click on connect. Now just take a second. Are you done? And there we go that's it um, I've already got a camera set up you'll notice it's black and white uh, yes I do night vision stuff as well and this one hasn't got an IR filter on bit of an oversight but I'm not overly fussed it gives me what I want to do and um, that's a, a test cube that I did early so what we'll do now is get onto Cura now Cura uh, the new version is available which is 4.5 and download it whether it's you're going to be uh, Windows, you're going to be Linux, whichever way it is. The Windows one, uh, sorry, Windows. Um, so you've got a selection here whether it's uh, for Windows, Automator, sorry, Automator. <laughs> Let's try again. You've got Windows, Mac, and Linux. Obviously, I use Linux, but they're all the same. They're going to do exactly the same thing for everyone. So just download and, and set up as you would do a normal program for each one of those platforms. Once you're up and ready, uh, you'll end up with a screen like this. Now, this is all changed and uh, I won't go into actually how to set up your um, your details in terms of the print itself because though, there's loads of tutorials for those, um, some very good ones. Uh, Maker's Muse, uh, uh, yeah. Angus, he's, he's pretty good on his uh, Cura as as well as Simplify 3D and every other one known to man. Um, but what we'll do is we'll just do a simple one. So you load in your first file. Don't don't worry about any of this like up here in a moment. So we'll load this first file, which will be Batman. Because everyone wants to be Batman. So this one, if it was to go, how it would be, it would be four hours, 26 minutes with uh, the settings I've got. So layer height and blah, blah, blah. I won't, again, I won't bore you with this, but you know, it's just a generic setting that I've got at the moment. Uh, you can do preview, which I always think is quite good. So we could go through all the, the slices and zoom in and have a move around. There we go. So that, that'll print for me uh, and again take four hours uh, I might, what I'll do is I'll probably print this just to prove that it does work and put a time lapse and a link to this video anyway so so once you've got that far what we want to do is then go to save to file I'll tell you what, stick it on the desktop and what I want to do and this is where it'll be slightly different is 
you want to on file type put G code and don't type G code just type GCO click on save and then what I then do is if I just drag that across you can see they've got Batman GCO and all I do with this is open it up in my favourite text editor leaf pad and essentially I just rip out everything from there upwards and if I not did that too quickly so where it says generated from God, I don't even know what that is. That's some old, <laughs> uh, I don't even know what that is actually. But from for whatever, you'll probably have something similar. But I always go from there upwards. In fact, I tell you what, I'll take that out because it's, that's, that's not even required. So essentially this M40 is my bed temperature. I'm going to keep that 260, the, my PLA, sorry, PLA, ABS seems to quite like this temperature it's, way, it's quite hot but it does the trick so all i'll do is I'll, I'll come further down just check my other temperature 260 and with that i'm i'm happy to go i'll just get down to the there's a, there's a there we go so layer five so all this above is for the it's for the raft i'm printing this on so what I'll do is I'll just keep it up at 95. Again, I've had I've had success with this, so I'm confident in this. So what I want to do now is click on save, and that's it. The file's ready. So what we'll do is go back to my. So this is my old one, and this is a new one. I forgot connected. This uh, okay. So scroll down. Click on upload, desktop, Batman, open, and this one with it being a bit of a longer file, sorry, a larger file, not a longer file, um, it will take a little longer to load up. As you can see, a, a 20 millimeter a test cube. 146 kilobytes. Uh, the CTC, sorry, CTC, the CTC C70 Logitech camera mount is a 7.2 megabytes. Um, I wasn't too sure on how how large this next one is, but we'll just let it update. But once it updates, you'll be left with these icons here, uh, assuming that this still says connect. If it doesn't, click on connect, and off you go. Then all you want to do is click on load and print and away you go uh, if you're if you've already got this downloaded uh, obviously in a logitech camera you can uh, monitor it uh, the the usb cameras for this uh, for octoprint are, are not overly fussy uh, so majority of them will work so just see what you've got uh, you can get a cheap one from amazon for five pounds and that'll work and then what you can then do is go into the time lapse settings and I have um, have your video done have your print which I always thinks good so is this still uploading wow okay but anyway I won't bore you anymore but that's pretty much how to get up and running with uh, a new octoprint and octopi with Cura so Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If I've bored you too much or I've missed something, please by all means tell me in the comments. Uh, but as usual, like, share, subscribe. And there we go. Well, thanks. Bye.